here how are you guys doing it's a beautiful uh sunday afternoon i've been out uh, messing kind of with my tower gardens i've been replanting doing a little maintenance and um so i'm pretty excited it's just been a relaxing day and i'm uh, excited that all of you are going to join me today uh to talk a little bit about growing without a whole lot of work, okay? So one of the things that caught my attention when I first started growing uh, tower gardens, when I first saw them, my first thought was, I don't have to weed anymore. Like I was so excited because I had this incredible back injury that was preventing me from going out and even weeding my yard. Like I couldn't even think about a garden, even container gardening. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want the soil. I didn't want to have to worry about, you know, the weather. I just didn't want to do it. So when I first saw Tower Gardens, I was super stoked that I did not have to do any weeding, no rototilling, and there wasn't a lot of maintenance. That's the beautiful part of this. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about seedlings and planting and um, all the different things that you can do and the little maintenance that you're going to do every single week okay so i'm going to step over here and i'm actually going to turn around my camera well no i'm actually going to put you right here let me see if i can do this so you can see this everybody see that i think that's perfect actually okay so there's a couple different growing mediums one of them which comes with your kit, by the way. When you, when you become a tower garden owner, you actually get everything to get started. And so you're going to get something that's called uh, rock wool. Okay, this is what it looks like. has a little hole in it for you to put your seeds and the vermiculite in. And the other growing medium, which we get from True Garden when we buy seedlings, is this. And this is called cocoa core. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But this is what comes in your kit. Okay. Um, and so this is rock wool. It is um, created by spinning together fibers that are formed from melted basalt, but I'm gonna say this wrong, basaltic rock, okay? So basically it's heated at a really high temperature and there's like, like threads in here and it's kind of all put together and it has a higher pH. So there's some things you gotta know about rock wool. It has more of an alkaline pH to it, okay? And then the other thing that you're gonna notice is that um, these are not compostable. So when the plant is done, you just throw it away, okay? Because you're not gonna be able to reuse this thing. Um, the other thing is, is you can get it wet. And what I recommend uh, for anyone that's using these is that they soak them in the sink overnight. It, it helps to change the pH of this growing medium. And that's really all this is used for. It's used so that the roots have something to attach to, okay? So it is a growing medium, so soak it overnight and you're good to go. Now, the first thing I'm gonna uh, talk to you about is a lot, I get a lot of questions about, can I just uh, get some seedlings from my Grange Co-op or Lowe's or Home Depot um, that are in soil? The answer to that is you can, but you cannot have soil in the tower garden, okay? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to literally take the plant, like pretend this was in uh, uh, dirt. You're going to literally take the dirt all off the roots. You're going to wash the roots gently and get all that dirt, all the vermiculite off the roots. And then you're going to get one of these that's wet, okay? Look at what I did. I made it like a sandwich. You just put the little roots in there. You see my finger? Okay, put it together, put a little rubber band around it, and you're good to go and you stick it in, okay? So you can do that. Um, there are two uh, ways that you can grow. Um, these come with your kit. They're called, these are the little cups that come with your kit and it literally would go right in here, just like that, okay? Now in the home tower, you're gonna need to order some of these little guys because these little guys work really good in the microgreens. And I'll show you, I think I have a brand new one I just put in. I'll try to show you before we get off the call is um, this, these are called tower garden clips. Okay, so this goes over and, and uh, the little thing sits right here. It's pretty cool, okay? 
So two different ways that your seedlings can be uh, plopped in there. Okay, now I started growing some lettuce seeds. And I'm going to show you. And that's wet, so sorry. I want to see if you can see this. So what you do is you put a little vermiculite, which, by the way, comes with your kit. You're going to put a little vermiculite, the seeds, and a little vermiculite over the top. Okay? So easy. Now what I do is I take popsicle sticks, or you can actually get what I call uh, craft sticks that have a little pointy end. And you're going to label what you grew, because I'm going to tell you when all these come up, it's all going to look like hair, and you're not going to remember a thing about what you grew. Okay? So I'm going to show you how easy this is. So um, I have two different things. I have some arugula. Let me see if you can see it. See how tiny that arugula is? It's like these little beads right here. Okay. And a couple squash seeds. So my husband wanted some squash seeds. Uh, a little bit different. So I have zucchini growing, but I didn't have butternut squash. So I'm going to take two because one may not grow. Okay. You're going to stick them in the rock wool just like that. Kind of tap it down. And then I'm going to put a little vermiculite over the top. Literally, that's as much as it is to start your little seedling. And then I'm going to put my little stick right there. Okay? Perfect. Now, I have these little clippers. They make it really good. Or tweezers. To put these little seeds. Or, there we go. Um, in the in these little holes and I always put you know more than one or two because you never know um, if it's going to take you know seeds are kind of funny that way now I will tell you people are buying seeds like crazy right now so one I'm going to show you a couple things that you can do for your seeds there we go okay just like that now I'm going to cover these two with some vermiculite just like that. Tamp it down just a little bit. Voila. And I label them. And now I've got nine plants growing. Now I soaked this overnight. Remember, I said you got to soak it. And there you are. And in about 10 days, all of those are going to be up. Okay? So they grow pretty darn fast. Now some of your flowering plants, like the squash, it may take you a little bit longer. But honestly, it doesn't take very long at all. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do, and, oh, I forgot to tell you, and the company will send you some seeds, seed packets, okay, to get started. So you always get a, a oh, I don't know, six or seven, I think, and so that's pretty helpful. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you about Coco Core. This is Coco Core, and when you order from True Garden, and isn't his seedlings nice? Look at that. Already up. Oh, my gosh. They're just, it's amazing. So you can see like this is a little bit more compact and it almost looks like dirt. Can you see that? Almost looks like dirt, but it's not. What it is, is it's coconut shavings. Now, here's some pretty cool things about Coco Core that I do like. Um, let me put this up here. So one of the things is that Coco Core is made from coconut fiber. Okay, so it's, it's completely compostable. So if you want to throw this in your garden when it's done, you can. Um, usually it has really good drainage. It does keep it more moist, so you don't have to run your um, water on as much. And there's plenty of room for the root system. Look at that. Look at the root system on this thing. Okay. Um, it also is pH neutral. Now remember I said that the... Um, rock wool is more alkaline this is ph neutral which is pretty awesome and it minimizes harmful pathogens and it reduces the risk of pests so i think that's a pretty good thing and it's kind of an environmentally conscious product okay which i really do love and um you can reuse it okay so um this is a pretty awesome product and you can get them from true garden okay um so if you want a quick start if you order a tower garden, you want a quick start, order the seedlings, right? If you can wait like uh, 10 days to two weeks, uh, grow your own, okay? Um, so now that we've done that, we've planted a little bit. Now I'm going to show you a couple other things. So I 
um, gather seeds. These are acorn squash seeds from a organic acorn squash that I cooked and I got these seeds out. I also did, uh, this is the ones I planted, the butternut squash seeds. They were also organic. And I don't know if you can see this. Now, whoop, I just dropped it, but it is not, I haven't loosened them yet. Okay, so do you see it? It's on wax paper. Those are tomato seeds that I've rinsed off. And I'll tell you why. Um, I try every year. This is a special tomato that was given to me, seeds were given to me by the Oregon Extension Office. And you can't find these uh, anywhere. They don't sell them. So when I harvest them, I just slice them in half. I gather the seeds, I dry them, I rinse them and dry them. And then I put them in a seed container. So that's pretty cool. You can do that as well. Um, so when we're talking about seed containers, this is one. And I have them all labeled, which is pretty cool for me because you can actually just take these out. Look at that. So, um, this is, uh, let me look. I got to read it. Oh, it's cilantro. Yeah, see? And it's got a little lid on it. It keeps them a lot fresher. Those are little kale seeds. You can label the top. The other thing that I'm going to be looking at, and, and all of you might be looking at because I think it's going to be important, um, you can get them on Amazon. They can be organic as well, but it's called a seed vault. And it normally will come with about 60,000 seeds or more. And um, I noticed the other day that one of my seed providers is completely out of seeds. Another one is running low on some things. So, so anyway, you can actually get harvest your own seeds. It's totally easy. Um, and then put them in a plastic bag or, you know, a container of some kind that's going to help be helpful uh, to keep the freshness. Now, the other thing with maintenance is um, once a week. So when you first get your tower, uh, let me see, see the A? This is the tonic. Um, what I love about this tonic is it's a one size fits all. You know how in um, regular gardens uh, you have to have like fertilizer for this and fertilizer for that well you don't need that with the tower garden it's totally uh in all purpose mineral blend and when you first get your tower you're going to put a cup of a so the cup is this you get the cup put a cup of a and a cup of b and in about 10 days you're going to put another cup of a and another cup of b okay now it's full strength and the reason you're going to wait 10 days is usually your little seedlings unless they have been getting tonic, um, you know, you don't want to over fertilize them by any means. So you're going to want to uh, let them have about 10 days of a weakened solution. And then you're going to bring it up to full strength. After that, it's about a week to 10 days. You just add 200 milliliters. Look at how much water you're using. There's a great video on it. And there's also some instructions in the tower garden, but I usually pick a day like Friday is my day. Friday is when I go out and I, t I check my water, I put some more tonic in there, and I test the pH. Now, I want to show you something, because my pH was off in one of my towers, but they give you a pH kit, and I always tell people, man, if it's around lime green, you know, right in here, even up to here, you're doing okay, all right? So, don't worry about it if it's too much. So... I don't know if you can see this. See how it's at the first line? You go to the first line with your tower garden water and you're gonna put this in here. Now I've already adjusted it, but look how high it is. It's a little, it's too high. And here in Arizona, it does have a tendency to run too high. So this one actually is more like, oh, almost 7.5. It's not horrible, but it could be better, okay? So, uh, but don't like panic over it. That's the biggest thing. Just don't panic. Um, and so if it's too high, they even give you everything to reduce it. So this is pH down. If it's too high, you use pH down. If it's, if it's too low, you're going to use pH up. Okay. Super simple. That is the maintenance, uh, <laughs> on these towers. Okay. So hold on a second. There we go. Whoops. So again, like literally it is not hard to do any of this. Um, my seed container. Oh, I got my seed container from Amazon. It's actually for beads. 
It's a beading container. So it keeps little beads in there. So go to Amazon. You totally can find a bead container. Any kind of container that has a screw-on lid works. Okay? So it is super simple, super easy. Hey, Sandy. Sheila, thanks for joining. Yeah, Heidi. Thank you. And um, so, yeah, you can totally get that and, um, and work from there. So, again, super simple. Grow your own. Order your starts. You know, you can get, uh, you know, ones from the nursery, get all the dirt off of it. And look at this. This is what I want to show you. I was just out picking tomatoes. Look at this. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it's like your own grocery store, right? It's just amazing. So um, eggplant. This is an eggplant, by the way. It's so good. I, I have so many good recipes for eggplant. I can't begin to tell you. So um, super simple, super easy. It is hitting the easy button, like Heidi says. Um, literally, I think I spend maybe 10 or 15 minutes every week. That's it. I harvest, I enjoy, I go out and I love on it. And it's just, it's, uh, it's kind of fun. I mean, you really in start enjoying gardening again because it takes the work and the guessing and everything out of it. When I say this is a plug and play system, I wasn't kidding. Like literally it's plug and play. Um, it's super easy to handle pests. It's super easy to handle transplanting because I'm gonna show you this is how easy it is. I'm going to take this off of here. I'm going to go out and show you. I'm going to, we're going to do a stroll. That's what all, this whole series has been, is about strolling. So I'm going to show you something because, oh, I have my frost blanket on because the wind was up. Look at, <laughs> right? But this is how easy it is. Seriously. Go up here. Go up here. See, there's an empty port right down here. Right here. Yep, that's what you do. That's how simple it is to go ahead and um, transplant. So I think anybody who says they have a black thumb, it doesn't count with tower gardens. It may count with houseplants and it may count with other things, but not tower gardens. Super, super fun, super, super easy, incredibly affordable. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I will talk to you later. Next week, we actually are going to talk about taking the guesswork out of it. And we're going to be talking about different systems, what the costs are, what it breaks down, um, all kinds of things. So anyway, join me next Sunday at 3 p.m. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.